In this lecture, we'll take a look at AWS Transcribe or Amazon Transcribe. We'll be looking into how we can use the APIs and work with a console application using C Sharp and .NET Framework. The first thing that you need to do is create your AWS account. You can do that by clicking over here, sign in to console, and then follow up the on-screen instructions to create your account. Once your account has been created, log in and then reach to IAM Management Console. Now this you can access by going to services and typing over here as IAM. And once you do that, click on it, it will open the Management Console. That is the user console. As I'm already on that page, it's not loading it again. Now, clicking on users over here, will take you to this screen and here you are supposed to create a user which will be accessing the APIs programmatically. For that, you go and click on add user. Click on a user name. So that's the name I've given and you have to enable this checkbox, programmatic access. Click on that and then say next permissions. On this screen, I'll be selecting admin. You can obviously filter it down to other kind of a group and assign that. But for purpose of this demonstration, we'll stick to this group. Click on next tags and finally review. Once you'll do that, you'll be shown a summary screen kind of thing and then you just click on create user. Now, once the user has been created, you'll find this access key and secret key. You need to copy these two and put it in your app.config file as key value pair, app settings basically. And once you have done that, you also have to ensure that what exactly is the reason where you will be creating your buckets. For instance, once your user account has been created, next thing that you need to do is go to your S3 management console. Now to access S3, you need to click on services and choose S3 from recently visited or under storage S3. Now you click on that and here you'll be presented with your buckets basically. And you can click on to create a new bucket. Once you'll create the bucket, you'll get the region where this bucket exists, like over here, US West. So that is the region that you also have to specify in your app.config file. And I'll give you a quick glimpse of that in, the, in this demo. Now, once you have created your account and S3 bucket has also been created, the next thing that you need to do is go to this Amazon transcribe. Now here, you can obviously manually check this out like I've done over here, created a transcription job by clicking on create job and following the instructions that comes along and uh, just filling it up and creating a transcription job over here. But in this demo, we'll be doing it programmatically using .NET and C Sharp. So now let's go ahead and uh, open up Visual Studio 2019. So here I've created a console application. And the first thing that I'm doing over here is specifying the app setting. So here you can see I have provided the name of the bucket as AWS bucket and then the access key and secret key that I showed how you can retrieve from the website. And then we have the region where our bucket resides. And here we have the file path where we will be keeping the media files as well as the transcripts that get generated. Now, once you have uh, done this, the next thing that you'd need to do is install some NuGet packages. Now, over here, we have installed AWS SDK Core AWS SDK S3 and AWS SDK dot transcribe service. Now it will also install some dependent libraries like over here, AWS SDK auto scaling was installed when we installed these libraries. Now, once you have done this by installing the NuGet packages, the next thing is coming onto your program.cs file. Now over here in your program.cs file, you can see that we have created S3 client and a file mapping. Why we are doing this? Let's explore. The first thing is we have the file path that I mentioned in the app.config file. So here we have that stored in the variable file path. Now, 
AWS Transcribe supports multiple file types, but it does not support few of them as well, which we have mentioned over here. Now, for these, what we will be doing is we'll be converting them to MP3 file format. And that's the reason why we have created this set of extensions. And whenever we are processing any file, we find that its extension is not MP3 or the one supported by AWS Transcribe. Or in other words, if they have these extensions, then we'll be converting them to MP3. So here we have a file like interview with mic.mp3. So in this case, we won't be converting it. So this function will not execute. But if we have something which ends with walk WMA ARF, then obviously we'll do the conversion and then upload it to S3. Please note that in order to work with AWS Transcribe, we'll have to upload all our media files on S3. So here we have the upload to Amazon S3 code. What we're doing is we are passing the file name and file path. Now this is the file name which will be appearing on S3. So what we are doing is over here, when we talk about converting to MP3, we are making use of some libraries like Enrico. And using that, we will be converting them to MP3 file format. And once we have that, file created will be storing it and the details will be sent back to the calling method. And here, the same is then passed over here, upload to Amazon S3. Now this method here, we are uploading it to S3 bucket. So we get the AWS bucket name over here, then the name of the directory and the file name. So you can see that the file name over here is being assigned to this S3 file name and subdirectory is not there, we're directly uploading into a bucket, so that's the reason why the subdirectory name is empty. You can obviously make use of a subdirectory as well, if you feel like, so this method basically supports that. And here we have a file stream, so we are opening the file, and then we have a library, which is an instance of uh, Amazon Uploader class, and using that, we can send the files to S3, and here we will be passing these parameters, file stream, then the bucket name, directory name, and S3 file name. Here, as you can see, Amazon uploader file we have, and this is the method that we have used over here in our program.cs file. So here, we have basically created an instance of the Amazon S3 client by passing access key, secret key, and the region, and then we are making use of the transfer utility provided by Amazon and transfer utility upload request. Using that, we are basically uploading it, the file basically, and once that's done, we are returning true. So this way we are uploading the file on S3, and once the file has been uploaded, we are then moving on to another method, and we call it auto-transcribe AWS. Now here you will notice a specific thing, like we are saying S3 colon forward slash, and then the bucket name and file name. So this is the file format that AWS Transcribe API accepts. So you need to prefix S3 colon forward slash, and then you need to provide the name of the bucket and file name. After this, this is the language in which the audio is, and we want the transcription to happen. And then this is the name of the transcription file in our case that we want. Now, if I go to this method here, a couple of things that we are doing. AWS Transcribe allows you to identify the audio used in the file, media file. And that is a very cool thing. Now let's say you have a certain number of speakers speaking different languages. The language which is being used more often or which is used quite a lot in that audio file or media file will be treated as the language for that particular file. And here we can provide a subset of languages to AWS Transcribe to find out which among these languages is the one that is being used in the media file. And that is something very cool about this AWS Transcribe. We also covered Google speech-to-text, but that was lacking this feature. 
Now this makes it very intelligent if you see. Like I don't know the language of the audio file, but I know for certain that it is going to be among these languages. Any of these languages could be the one. And it is going to find it out for you and then you can obviously transcribe it properly. So that's one thing that I liked about this AWS Transcribe API. And to find out or to initialize the transcription process, the first thing that we need to do is create an instance of Amazon Transcribe Service Client. So here we have our Transcribe Client. We pass access key, secret key, and region. Once that's done, we are creating a transcription job. Now, this one is not necessary in your case if you are starting from scratch. In my scenario, what I've done is if I've already created a transcription job, I can go back to that job, get the transcript and, you know, present it to the user directly without retranscribing it all over again. So in this scenario, we'll be skipping this part. We'll be starting afresh from this as if we are starting a new transcription request. So the first thing you need to do is after you have created the transcribed client, is start transcription job request. Now, this is very crucial. Here, you are providing a job name. This has to be unique. There cannot be two job names with the same name. Amazon will throw an exception when you'll try doing this. Next is the settings. So here, Amazon is also able to identify number of speakers involved in a conversation. So the media file that you're uploading, Amazon Transcribe will be able to identify how many speakers are there. And the maximum number of speakers that can be identified at this point is 10. By showing show speaker labels, you will be getting in your JSON output speaker labels as well. So when one was speaking, that label will appear along with the start and end time. Here we are obviously providing the file, the media file with the S3 file URL. The output of the JSON file or the transcript file will be the same bucket over here that we are providing. And as you can see, we are saying identify the language as well. And then we have the language options that we created earlier over here on top. So this is basically the job request that we have created. Then using the transcribe client, we are saying start transcription job. And here we are providing the request as parameter. One thing to note over here is that this method is also available as an asynchronous method. But over here, we are making use of synchronous one. Now, what I'm trying to do over here is we are finding whether the language is valid or not. So if the audio is having some other language, rather than the languages mentioned in this list, we would obviously not go ahead and transcribe it. So what we are doing over here is we are finding out using the response dot transcription job dot transcription job status. If it is in progress or queued, we are creating a job request that is get transcription job request and we are passing again using the transcribe client dot get transcription job and this job request is passed over here will return us a response using that response dot transcription job dot transcription job status if it is in progress or queued we try to identify the language so here you can see that the language code is stored in this variable so for different languages we have certain codes like for english us we have en dash us and that is what is being stored over here and when we are getting the language code back as a response, we are comparing it over here with the language code. And if this does not match, we are saying there's no such language and we will not proceed with transcription. We'll break it there. But if it founds, then what happens is, so here you can see we are deleting the job as soon as we see that the language is not a valid language. We delete that transcription job request using delete transcription job request and we specify the file id that is the basically job name over here and then we call transcribe client dot delete transcription job passing the delete request over there in case the language obviously exists in that case what we do is we get the file so for every transcription job amazon will create 
a file, a JSON file, and that you can retrieve using transcript file URI method from your response. So checkpoint.transcriptionjob.transcript.transcript file URI will be available. And if it's not empty, what we are doing is we are going back, we are providing our credentials, we are creating a job request, that is get object request. We know that the file is of type JSON and we know where it resides. So we pass the bucket name and the file ID. So this basically the job name dot JSON is the file that Amazon creates. So that's the reason why we say file plus JSON because if you see over here, that's our transcription job name, the file ID itself. Now we get the response back. We store it as a string data over here. And then what we are doing is we are converting this to a simpler format which is used at our end. So basically this contains, if I show you over here, a transcript model basically. So the transcript model contains transcripts, the number of words that make that transcript, the speaker label, the start time and the end time. So the JSON file that is returned by Amazon is a different one, I'll show you. But the one which you will need for your transcription purposes will be much simpler. And this method basically does that. So if I go back now, we have the transcription result available over here as a JSON data, and then we convert it to a model. And that model then simply stores the data in the database. So this is the method that we have created over here. And uh, it's big one basically. And if anyone is interested in understanding how this works, message me in the description and I'll get in touch with you. Okay, now, now that was AWS Transcribe. Now let me quickly take you to the earlier job that was created. And here, if I show you download full transcript. So this is the JSON file which is created by Amazon Transcribe. The name obviously will be different when you'll be using the web interface. At that time, you'll get it as ASR output. But when you'll be creating it programmatically, then it will be a different file name. The name of the job will be the name of the file. So here we are opening the JSON transcript file, which is generated by Amazon. And uh, here you can see that the name of the job is over here transcription job, then the account ID and all, and then the transcripts over here. The whole transcript is shown over here. Then you have the speaker label, so it shows how many speakers were there. And then obviously it shows the segment wise data for speaker end time and start time. Once you close that, you get the items over here. For every word, you get the type as pronunciation or punctuation. For pronunciation, you will have start and end time and the confidence level along with the content. So these are all the items and uh, that's pretty much it. So the method that I showed you over here is basically taking that JSON data and converting it into a simpler model using C-Sharp. So that was all about AWS Transcribe using C-Sharp and .NET Framework. Thank you.